What's up guys, it's River and welcome to the Canon SL3 tutorial. We're gonna go over the exact settings that you need to get the best photos and videos out of your camera. Plus, an in-depth overview of the buttons and the menu so you get a really good hang of how to use your new camera. Let's dive right in. All right guys, so let's jump right into it. The first thing we're gonna learn is the on and off switch. I know it seems a bit basic, but it's an important thing to learn. So when it's in off position, it's obviously off. When it's in the on position, that's actually photo mode. And once it's next to the camera icon, that's when you're in video mode. So that's an important thing to learn. Photo mode is on and video camera, that's a video mode. All right guys, next up is the mode dial. Now mode dial is really important to learn because this determines what shooting mode your camera's in. When it's got the A icon right there, that's auto intelligent. Plus that is like the best way to shoot automatically. This camera does a really good job with automatic settings. And uh, we're gonna skip PTV and stuff because I really don't recommend people learn those modes are not particularly helpful. I'd recommend, and then after that is M is for manual. Manual is like the best way to shoot. Um, I highly recommend learning manual photography. I've got a full tutorial up on the main channel. So be sure to check that out if you guys get a chance. And other than that is uh, filter mode. These two little circles just represent filters. It's a fun creative thing to do, but uh, that's really a whole tutorial on its own. And then there's scene mode. This will determine if you're shooting portraits, landscapes, the camera will detect that automatically. So for the time being, we're just gonna keep this at uh, automatic and we'll go over the rest of the camera. And two really important buttons to note here is the dial. I'll show you guys more of what this does later and the ISO button. Uh, this, when you hold this down, you can actively change your ISO. This is really important. And also next to that is display. I'll show you guys more of what that does later, but the display button is really important. And another thing I quickly want to go over is the shutter button. Now it's pretty obvious that you know you press this down, you get a you get a photo. Uh, but the one thing that most people don't know is if you half press it, it'll actually quickly catch focus and meter your image. So if you just press it down halfway, you hear that you'll hear that beep. So what that beep does it it a turn uh, catches focus, uh, turns on your autofocus. But also if you have it set to automatic mode, it will quickly meter your image, as in correctly expose your image, set your aperture and shutter where it needs to be, so that you can uh, get a properly exposed photo. So just halfway press and then full press. All right guys, so next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to change your aperture, shutter, and your ISO if you're shooting manual. So we're gonna switch it over to the M icon on your mode dial. Now, once you have manual enabled, uh, you don't have to press okay, but I'm just gonna press okay here. And now you'll see all of your settings right there on the actual LCD screen. If you guys wanna change shutter speed, just turn that dial that I showed you at the very top earlier uh, to the right and your shutter speed will go up as you can see. Uh, to the left, it'll go down. To the right, it'll go up. And I'd like to shoot between uh, one over 60 or one over 80. That's usually the minimum for not getting motion blur. For portraits, I'll do as high as 125, uh, but that's generally where I like to keep it. And if I'm shooting something really fast moving, I'll do like, 320 or 400. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you guys how to change your uh, aperture. It's the same shutter dial at the top, but you also wanna hold this AV button now. Once you hold the AV button down, as you can see, it highlights the aperture. And if you turn that left, your aperture will open up. Turn that right, your aperture will close down. Uh, make sure you don't let go of it halfway through. Otherwise, as you notice, it'll go back to shutter. So uh, make sure you hold it down. Uh, I find the, for portraits, I'll do like an f4 at a 55 mil range on my lens, but uh, for, you know, landscapes, I'll do something closer to an f8 or an f9. So last but not least, we're going to go over how to change ISO. So ISO button, you don't need to hold down. Once you press it, it'll switch into ISO mode, and then from there, you can go left or right. For the SL3 specifically, I don't recommend going over 1600. That's really maximum for us here. Um, but I tend to shoot all of my photos and video between 400 and 800 ISO. Every time you go up a stop in ISO from 200 to 400, you're essentially doubling the light that's coming in. So 400 to 800, double, 800 to 1600, double. And if you guys don't want, the, want these settings coming up while you're shooting, maybe you just want to look through the optical viewfinder, that display button we talked about earlier. If you hit it once, this will turn off. If you hit it again, it will come back. And one thing I quickly want to go over is if you hit this button right here, that's live view. And when you're in photo mode, you can see whatever your camera's shooting. And the autofocus on this camera is actually better in live view than it is in through the optical viewfinder. So it's something to be aware of. 
And one cool thing to know once you're in Live View is if you hit this Q button right here, you'll go into all of your quick menus. So you can change your most important settings like autofocus, drive mode, um, white balance, uh, picture profile. That's all really useful. So again, just Q and then you can exit it from there. And one thing that I really like about being in Live View is that I can quickly tap down here and change my shutter speed like this. Sometimes you don't want to fiddle around with the dials, maybe if I'm doing product photography. It's just a lot easier to just quickly set it like this. It's closer to how I use my RED camera. I just uh, use a touch screen and uh, figure out whatever I want. It's really rare that I find myself using dials, especially on a Canon camera. All right guys, so next up, we're gonna show you guys how to get the best photo and video quality out of your SL3. So once you hit menu, this will come up. What I really like about Canon menus is once you enter a menu, it'll actually tell you what the menu does. It's really good if you're a beginner. And next up, Right here, you'll see image quality. Now, I'm shooting JPEG because for a camera like this, I don't really need to shoot RAW, but if you want to shoot RAW, you turn your dial at the top and it'll let you toggle between your RAW settings. Uh, there's RAW and C-RAW. C-RAW is compressed RAW. I prefer shooting RAW. Uh, you're really not going to save that much space, and also sometimes, depending on what graphics card you're using, your computer is going to have to work extra hard to uncompress that RAW on your computer. And if you just hit this D-pad left and right, you can choose different sides of JPEGs. I prefer shooting JPEG with the little curvy sign next to it, that's JPEG fine. Otherwise, this is a lower quality JPEG. You will get more shots out of your camera, but it's not as refined uh, otherwise. And today, SD cards are so big, like 64 gigs, 128 gigs. Um, you know, you're really not saving that much space, so I prefer just JPEG fine. Another really cool thing that I want to show you guys is I know a lot of you guys shoot for Instagram. So if you go into, so right below image quality, you'll see still image aspect ratio. And here you can actually pick your aspect ratio. Three by two is really good because you'll actually get it kind of a square image, but you'll get the full width of the sensor. Four by three is Instagram native, so you'll actually get a square image. 16 by nine is a TV and one by one is um, kind of just a square but uh, you guys can see what it will look like here. You'll kind of just get this aspect ratio. And it's really cool to be able to shoot in this aspect ratio directly because it's just that much easier for framing. And next up, I'm gonna show you guys drive mode. So once you're shooting and you're getting the highest quality out of your camera, uh, if you go to the second menu in this camera using the D-pad here, you'll see drive mode. So now single shooting is just you're taking one shot at a time. This camera does five frames per second, but continuous shooting is generally what I like to shoot at because this allows me to get the full five frames per second and I can literally just shoot back to back to back, which I really appreciate. Um, and also another thing in drive mode is self timer. This is really useful if uh, you don't have someone to help you shoot and you can just self set the timer. Uh, self timer two seconds or self timer 10 seconds. And this is probably my favorite self timer continuous where it will actually give you the number of shots that it will take. This is really great if you're trying to take multiple photos but for me, most of the time I'm shooting in continuous. And the last thing I wanna show you guys for photos is if you're shooting raw, it doesn't really matter what picture profile you shoot in, but if you're like me and you like to shoot JPEGs just because they're so hassle-free, go to the fourth menu in your camera menu, where you can just get it to using the D-pad, and press the middle button, you'll go into this, and now you'll see a whole bunch of picture profiles. Now what you wanna do is actually uh, shoot in standard, that's kind of the great Canon colors right off the bat, but what I actually recommend is Depending on what you want to do, if you plan to do no editing to your images whatsoever, they're just going straight to your computer or social media for family and friends, I actually recommend shooting in Faithful. Faithful will give you really beautiful colors, but they're not too, they're not too overpowering. Portraits look really good, especially for shooting people. Um, and if you do plan to do a little bit of editing, but uh, you just don't want to shoot raw because you know raw is just so overkill for whatever you're doing, you want to go down to user defined one, hit the info button, and here you'll go into picture style, uh, and you'll actually be able to make a custom picture style. So go into picture style, hit auto, and it'll take you to all of these. Now what you actually want to do is go into neutral, and now go into sh uh, sharpness. You want to set your strength to zero, which it already is. Uh, fineness, you want to actually set this to zero to one, and Threshold, you want to, again, just go to one. Contrast, you want to set this to negative two. Saturation, negative two. Color tone, now you, here's the thing about color tone. Never, ever, ever touch color tone. That actually determines the hue of your colors, and unless you really know what you're doing, just leave it be. 
And now you'll see that the blue that I'm actually shooting, or I'll put a figure in front of it real quick, uh, you'll see that I'm getting a very like muted and neutral look on this camera, but that's okay because what this will do is it'll give you much more room to play around with your images once you're editing them on your phone or where have you. And this is only recommended if you plan to do some mild bit of editing on your camera, uh, or sorry, rather on your photos. If you don't plan to do any editing, I recommend just keeping it in standard or faithful. And the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is a video. So you wanna go to the top dial, switch it over to video, and once you're in video mode, you automatically have uh, your LCD screen turned on because you cannot look through the optical viewfinder during video mode. So once again, you wanna hit menu, and you'll notice that the settings have actually changed, or rather the menus have actually changed because we're now in video mode. So you wanna go to movie record size, and depending on what you like to shoot, 4K is great because you know that's where you'll get the highest resolution, but you'll get a huge crop in your image. So personally, I don't like to shoot most Canon cameras in 4K. I'd probably recommend shooting something like full HD at 60 frames per second. Uh, note that HD is really only 720. You can see the resolution right here up at the top. But I personally like shooting full HD at 60 frames per second, especially if you're a streamer. I know how much gamers love 60 frames per second, or if you don't need to do 60 frames per second, you can do full HD at 29.97, which is 30 frames per second, uh, depending on if you're in PAL or NTSC region. So, And also, if you don't need to take up that much space, it's really just like a video that you're shooting for yourself. It doesn't need to be color graded or anything. You can actually shoot uh, this version right here, which is full HD, 30 frames per second, but it's called Light IPB, which saves you even more space and it's really useful if you're on a small uh, SD card or you just or you just know you're gonna be making so many of these and the video quality doesn't really matter too much, it doesn't need to be graded, it's really useful. So next up, right below movie record size is sound recording. Now this camera does have an input jack for audio which is right over here. So I wanna make sure you guys get the best audio possible out of your camera. So go into audio recording and you never wanna leave it at auto, audio, auto I mean. So you wanna hit uh, the center button right here and go into manual. And now once you're in manual, you actually wanted to have your, rec your level be kind of low. So if you wanna go back into record level, hit the middle button, you'll actually be able to take it down a bit. Now what you wanna do is you wanna have it just barely touch that 12 mark right there in the middle. So I'm gonna keep going down and it's catching my voice right now. This actually, this camera does actually have pretty decent internal audio, but again, most likely a lot of streamers and a lot of YouTubers that are using this camera will want to shoot in, uh, will want to shoot with a uh, external microphone. So if you keep going down a little bit and check one, two, check, 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 keep going up, check one, two, check, 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 check one, two, right there. It's like barely touching the 12th. That's usually where you want to keep it. You'll also see a wind filter and thing. You can kind of experiment with this. I find the wind filter never really does anything, but I'm also not shooting in windy conditions. And another thing to note is that if you go into wind filter and then right below that is actually something called an attenuator. Hope I'm saying that right. But this is like an old school audio thing. This is basically to help you if you're peaking, which means if you're getting any kind of distortion, if you're basically too loud. I normally just keep this off because I find it adds like a bit of suppression to my audio anyways. But if you're in a place where you're just like, wow, I cannot control how loud things are getting and there's like, the sound is a little too erratic. This will help you out, but I only recommend having it on if you actually need it. I really do not recommend keeping it on by default. You will get kind of like a weird crunchiness to your audio. And right below sound recording is Movie Digital IS. Now I recommend always having this enabled because it is extremely useful. It adds a lot of stabilization to your image. However, one thing to note is that Right below that is something called Enhanced, and Enhanced is a bit complicated because I only recommend having this on if you're going to have a lens, a Canon lens specifically, with image stabilization built into it. Canon, until recently, has always put their stabilization in their lenses, so if you have a lens with it on, lens with image stabilization have Enhanced. However, without, if you don't have an, uh, an image stabilized lens, uh, I recommend just having enabled, otherwise you'll get some weird warping. Also, a quick side note while we're talking about video settings, if you go to page two, you actually have a time-lapse mode in here. Now, this could be a whole tutorial on its own, but just wanted to let you guys know that it is there and it is super useful. And last but not least, I wanna show you guys how to set up a custom picture profile specifically for video. So, once you're in video, you actually wanna go, kinda of like the other one, you wanna go into your picture profiles, 
go to user defined and the way I think the best user defined and this is pretty much agreed upon on the internet is you want to set up a picture style in neutral and then kind of the same as before go to strength zero contrast negative two negative three I prefer negative two saturation negative two color tone never touch color tone but with this you will get a much flatter image and this is specifically if you want to color grade your camera you want to color grade your video file and you're going to do something with it but if you're not planning on color grading it, I prefer just shooting in standard or faithful. Also right below picture style is HDMI info display. Now, if you plan on having this go out to a streaming recorder or any kind of external recorder, just simply go into HDMI and check clean 4K output or clean H uh, full HD output, depending on what you're doing, but clean 4K output. Now you will, whatever comes out of your HDMI signal to a streamer or a switcher, it will be clean without the menu settings on top of it. And last but not least, another quick thing I'm going to show you guys is if you go to page five of your settings, you'll see autofocus method. This is really simple, but I just want to quickly take a second to talk about it. You'll have a few options, AF tracking, which will actually track faces and objects for you, or just single one point focus. I recommend using one point focus if you're shooting photos, but for everything else, I recommend AF tracking. Honestly, even sometimes if I'm shooting, if I'm shooting people, AF tracking it is the best auto-focusing system Canon has, and I pretty much leave it in this default. I really hope you guys got a ton out of this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button. It really helps the video out. It lets me know to keep making more of these tutorials. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever about this camera or anything else that we talk about on this channel, hit me up in the comments down below, and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. And those of you who leave super sweet comments, Thank you so much. You guys genuinely make my day. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure to subscribe for all the fun content we have coming out this year and I'll see you guys in the next video.